North Melbourne and Collingwood were no strangers to September pressure and met in a sudden death final for the fourth consecutive year. Just under 83,000 fans packed the MCG to see who would keep their 1980 Premiership hopes alive. Have North got any forwards? A burning question taken by Daryl Schimmelbush. Cleverly played, now Blight with a chance, lines them up 40 metres out and puts it through. The answer took just 30 seconds. Out to Magro. Magro dodges cleverly to Moore. Moore kick number 13 if he wants to give it. He runs past with great skill. Hand passes to Captain Shaw. In trouble from Greg. Out to Barron. That's great football. Brilliantly back to Greg to Shaw. And Dempsey. Beaten. Beaten by a great mark. Brilliantly taken by Olsen. Well, that was a perfect classical display of team football. Out to Barham, shoots for goal, and does it. Play on. Dench, again, he's fumbling. Well, McCann loses it to Ray Shaw. Great play, Shaw. One bounce. The long one in towards goal. It's there. Great goal by Ray Shaw. And the chance now for Madro. Gets the ball, kicks it wide to the member stand side of the ground. Craig Davis. What a man. And from the centre line, Pickett puts Collingwood into attack with an ungainly kick. Floated a long way, in fact, beat everybody but Dench, who gives it to Jarrett. He goes out wide looking for Schimmelbush. Byrne wearing him like a glove. Schimmelbush goes to ground, and that gives Byrne the jump. But through goes Schimmelbush, backed up by Henshaw. On to Brightest. Great play, North Melbourne. One bounce. Past the member stand. The second one. He's being mowed down by Morris. Great chase by Morris. Kicks to full four. Oh, why did he short pass? But he's done it well. And the mark taken by Wright, only 20 metres out directly in front. Well, very unselfish play from Glenn Denning. I wonder whether uh, it was wise. It came off. Certainly lessened the angle, Tim, but I had the same feeling as you did. Why did he do it? But it was successful, so therefore you condone it. Wright has kicked a goal this quarter and has kicked a second. He only came on at half-time. He's been on the field 15 minutes, has kicked two, and North Melbourne lead by 10 points. Fighting now as North Melbourne put it into play on the grandstand side, looking for Malcolm Blight, the big leaper. Behind it, Schimmelbush, uh, Barrel Schimmel, uh, Wayne Schimmelbush. A chance now for Wayne once again. Blight, beautifully to Brightus. Brightus quickly onto McCann. McCann, the half board flank, can put it right down and a lovely pass towards the forward pocket. Picked up by Jarrett. A bad hand pass goes straight to Wearmouth. Wearmouth is down. Down once again is Ronnie Wearmouth. Against Brightus. There's Kevin Morris. Morris's free kick. Backward of centre wing. Up towards half forward. Alan Davis with two to beat. Craig Davis supporting. But Dench comes away with the ball. Onto Ick. Bad bounce. Half hearted Ick. Dacos. Dispossessed. Play on. Dench. Again, Ick fumbling. Well, McCann loses it to Ray Shaw. Great play, Shaw. One bounce. The long one in towards goal. It's there. Moore and McCann again. Moore with the greatest strength and the greatest skill. Beautiful hand pass to Shaw. Ray Shaw steadies. Boots it downfield. Running the fight of the ball is Dench and Ramsey. It's going to beat them. It beat them. Play on. Play on, says the umpire. Glenn Denning holding the defence together, out to Blight, right back to Glenn Denning. Glenn Denning goes for the run in front of Domberg, wide to Jarrett. Jarrett will can kick it down to the full forward line, looking for Dempsey. Dempsey will mark. Dempsey will mark over the top of his opponent. He's been resting for the last five minutes, and that was beautiful football instituted by Glenn Denning. And there was Big Gary, Big Demps. I think it came from a bad mistake of umpiring by Cameron. I reckon Moore marked that ball. Here comes Dempsey, shoots for goal from 15 metres out and converts a wonderful opportunity. That's a Dench and Barham. Down it comes. Barham again. Across it goes towards Carlson. Carlson fumbles. Still has time to recover and kicks it back towards an open goal. And he has put it through. It's on their half forward line. Dempsey easily because Moore fell over. Dacos again, still struggling to get it, but Moore took it away from him. His kick is smothered, comes up towards that half-forward line, there's a chance. Going, oh, crap, down he goes. The umpire says play on, two Collingwood players here, Moore. You have to...
have to hurry. Serve box beautifully. The touch of a class of champion. And it's a Craig Davis mark in the goal square. And Peter Moore was the fellow that put it there. Seventeen minutes now. Another goal to Collingwood. And they go to 14-18 to 13-9. Another September classic between the Roos and the Pies, with nothing in it all afternoon. In the end, it was the Magpies, led by stars such as inspirational wingman Ricky Barham, scraping home to keep their season alive with a thrilling eight-point win. Captain Shaw, in trouble from Greg, out to Barham, great football, beautifully back to Greg to Shaw, and Dempsey, beaten, beaten by a great mark, brilliantly taken by Olsen. Well, that was a perfect classical display of team football, out to Barham, shoots for goal, and does it. Meanwhile at Waverley, Carlton and Richmond renewed their September rivalry, this time around in the qualifying final before more than 59,000 fans. And the Tigers certainly took no prisoners in the opening term. This infuriating Carlton coach Percy Jones and leading to an amazing scuffle between he and Richmond coach Tony Jewell at quarter time. And beats Burke to the ball. Austin chips it over the top. Again Carlton getting a long way out of the clear. This is Marku. Bounces across the half-back line. Straight the Tigers were in control, leading by 26 points at the first change. But could the reigning Premiers fight back? Set a half forward, goes for goal, and it's And Carlton have kicked the last two goals and are coming back. Southby with a 15-metre penalty from half-back flank. Up towards half-forward, Warren Jones and Lee. Lee thumps it uh, worth a kick, about 30 metres, to centre wing. Brilliant reigns. Gets away from Tom. Reigns, not a good kick to centre half forward. Duel is there, oh, missed it. Picked up out there by Smith. Handball to Jess. He goes for goal and he's kicked it. Very high spirited qualifying match at VFL Park before a crowd of 60,000 people. McClure wins, still fumbles. Great shot by Clark. Carlton Smith goal. Duel's kick up towards centre half forward. Lead by McClure. Tempany's there. Oh, a fine oh. mark over the top of him by Harms. McConville and uh, Armstrong. And Armstrong gets to do his boot. But uh, all the Carlton players are covered now. Great start from Old House. Oh, he's a powerhouse of a player. Francis McConville calling for it at centre half forward. Cotoggio back there too. Mackay. Oh, great mark. That's vintage Mackay for you. Terry Smith to take the free kick on the half-back line for uh, Richmond and down to the wing looking for Jess, but he's out position. It's up to Lee now, and Mackay is also limping. He's got a hamstring worry too, I believe. They're in lots of trouble, Carlton, and look at the oh, oh. fierce run through. That's Scripture putting the ball out of the pack. Barton again, good handball, better handball. Brian Wood a chance now. 30 metres out, perhaps. Lines up, good play, Richmond. That was first-class football, first-class final football by the Tigers. Bartlett from wide out in the forward pocket. 45 metres from goal. He's kicked 4-3, going for his fifth. Right in the goal square. Oh, McConville up in front of the pack, but couldn't mark. Down to Marku. English didn't expect it. While he's done a lot of interceptions. Left foot snap for goal. <laughs> Second goal to Robert Wiley. He got a couple of ankle taps in the headlock. I think he deserved that. Oh, great play by Wells. An open goal. It's floating back. Yes, it's through. A great goal to Greg Wells. Richmond very lucky then. Done to relieve. Welsh hasn't been sighted, number 31, since quarter time. In fact, uh, Welsh out marks him and gets one right across the side of the face. Gathered by Marku, 24 as well as he breaks away. A look at a shot, oh, and another goal for Greg Wells. Blues lead by five goals. A perfect set of bounce. Lee just marginally. Wiley under Rollings. Now they're starting to get their uh, teamwork going. Right. No 
number two by to that one. A superb mark by Michael Roach. He'd be just about buying the Richmond winning through to the second semi against Geelong with an impressive 42-point win over the Blues, who would now face Collingwood in the cutthroat first semi-final. Down the front to Jess. Bartlett at the back. Hands to it. Still a chance for Bartlett. He straight. Oh, great football, Kevin Bartlett. Six goals for the game. Goes to Fitzpatrick, doesn't travel all that far. And more than 94,500 fans packed the MCG to see the old rivals once again square off in yet another fiery September sudden death shootout. Tried to scoop it out, there's the ferocity of Magro going in, and he's going to get a free kick, and it's against Young. On the clock, Byrne is there, got two hands to it. Marku, oh, great tackle by Byrne. First of the ball will be Barham. He's got plenty of pace and he doesn't really need it here because he's got metres. Malin mowing him down. A good chase by Malin. Three bounces, Barham. Oh, what scintillating stuff by Barham. Four bounces. Drops the short pass into Waldo. And what fantastic football. McClure wants a good bounce. In trouble. Gets it across to the wing position. Hard. A great spearing hand pass to Wayne Johnston. On to Sheldon. Sheldon running with the flight of the ball, gets a good bounce. We'll give it across to Mackay. Trouble, gets past him. Steadies and shoots from the angle, shoots the guy and puts it through. Plays on quickly, runs into the centre, tremendous turn of speed and a thumping kick down. Looking for Craig Davis again, Tony Shaw for the crumbs. Shaw, Davis, or Davis is still battling hard, Sheldon there. Davis wants support, there's none about. Bill grabs him, he tries to get his kick. He's still in there, doing it all by himself. He gets a floor from King, an open goal coming up for Collingwood. King stabs it in, and he's home. can go on with it now, goes for the run, and beautifully to Barham. Barham in trouble, back to Wearmouth. Wearmouth back to Barham. Barham will shoot for goal. And oh, oh, oh! All Collingwood in defence, and they come out of it with a free kick. And the hand pass quickly comes from Ireland to Moore and on to Byrne, and Collingwood are out of trouble as Byrne gets the kick up towards centre wing. Wells in uh, front, or oh, it's knocked out towards Stewart, taken though by Harms. Backs his pace and wins brilliantly, bursts through the centre of the ground. Goes long, Mackay sets himself for Carlton, and has got it! A great mark by David Mackay. So Jacos from centre half forward, uh, just too far out to score, I'd imagine. Lead coming from low. Dacos thinks about it, but then decides to go long. Does kick long. It won't quite make it. Plenty of... Oh, great mark, Kink! It just shows you what he can do when he puts his mind to it. He can do anything when he's in the mood. Third mark to Rene Kink. Vintage Kink. 12 goals to four after half-time saw the Magpies end Carlton's back-to-back -back dreams and exact some small measure of revenge for their 1979 grand final heartbreak. Collingwood marching on to the preliminary final to the tune of 50 points. Breaks away with strength, snaps with the left boot and has put it through for a miracle goal. A great goal by Kink. Third goal. Oh, he beat them far too easily. Oh, he beat them too easily, that tackling. A bounce. The Magpies would face the loser of the second semi between minor premiers Geelong and the premiership favourites Richmond at Waverley. And more than 65,000 fans saw the fresher Cats come out firing to lead by two goals at quarter time. Then he kicks it up towards a good lead up here from Johnson. But Johnson's beaten for it. Coming in to help him now is uh, Whitcomb and also Floyd comes back to Turner. Turner got his kick up towards the forward line looking for Bright. He's got it, gives a long hand pass back here to Taylor. Taylor's got away, gives it back towards Terry Bright. Bright gives a hand pass out to another teammate. Goes into Bruce Nankervis. Goal, great football, Geelong. Yes, unusual for Roach. Could have been penalised there. Throw in. Jess, oh, but look at that knock by Blake. 20 to 30 metres. Capitalised on it, and he does. Whitcomb gets the ball up towards the centre wing position, and has found Taylor. Taylor's got the board wide, goes to the half forward flank. His kicker smothered a little bit. Easy for Richmond. Mount gives it across to Wiley. Wiley's into attack, drives it up towards centre half forward. A chance for Jim Jess. Middlemas from the back, dumps it away. Comes out here to his card, not the card, but towards Boss, up towards the centre wing. Kelvin Matthews is on. He's on his own. Gets the big lead from Terry Bright. Bright snaps it up on the half forward flank. Now the left footer going up towards the lead from Johnson. Now oh, a piece of football from Terry Bright. 
Rod Blake winning in the ruck so far against Lee, but Lee beats him this time with a 40 metre hit. Well, with the bounce, it's almost gone 50. Here's Monteith, oh, tapping brilliantly the Barber, going for his fourth goal, and it's a great kick by Huntley. He's done it again. Uh, takes a kick from centre half forward. It's a long kick. It's Roach and two Geelong defenders, and there we go. On Barber again. Number six, Kevin. The same with your kick last week in his crackerjack game against the Blues. It's a beautiful kick from Reigns and a pack of players. Just oh, But the Tigers slowly overpowered the Cats as the match wore on, booting seven goals to four after half time to run out 24 point winners and book themselves their first grand final berth in six years. The Cats would no answer to veteran Tiger champions Francis Burke and Kevin Bartlett. KB finishing with eight straight in a classic match-winning performance. Eight goals, Kevin Bartlett. The breeze just marginally favouring Geelong's end in the first quarter, but not by much. So the 1980 preliminary final pitted minor premiers Geelong under first-year coach Bill Goggin against perennial September disappointments Collingwood under Tommy Hafey. More than 75,500 fans flocked to Waverley to see who would win the right to challenge Richmond for the 1980 flag. These two sides had met twice during the season for one win apiece, and it was the Magpies who took the early advantage. The Pies led by nine points at quarter time and maintained that advantage to the main break. Surprises me. I think in a line ball like that, the man in the front usually gets the nod, and Ian Van is most unhappy and gets 15 metres. Oh, bad blue by the skipper when he had no chance of contesting for it. Here's Dacos. Bright goes through again. Umpires put the whistle away. Here's Turner showing pace to get away from him. Sees Peter Moore, has to balk. Short passes to the half-forward flank. Awkward bounce for Lund. Well done, Morris. Well done again by Morris. Great stuff. Out of bounds. Malarkey going off the ground. He's broken the finger. They lead by nine points, and we've played nearly four minutes in the second term. Stewart against Blake again, favoured by the bounce. Chance for Kink if he can get it onto the boot. Tried to do too much. Full his play, and Floyd picks up the loose ball. Gets the hand pass to uh, Boss. Further on to Ian Van Curvis, and the cat's out of trouble. Featherby creates space on centre wing, and he'll put Geelong into attack. Up towards half forward, Bright versus Island. Bright took the honours in the first term. Does well here, very clever play by Bright. Oh, great pass to Bruns, and that was punched up from Terry Bright. Bruns, 40 metres out, slight angle. Half a lead from Johnston. Johnston still unopposed, but Bruns decides he'll have a pot shot. Sixth kick to Neville Bruns. If he kicks a goal here, Terry Bright uh, deserves five points. Not a bad looking kick, good kick. Reds it through, great goal by Bruns of Geelong, their third, and the margin back to three points, and Bruns kicks his second. Through lack of form has really come back with uh, uh, vengeance now. Up towards Kink, he's in the middle of all that. This is for Geelong players everywhere, and Kervis again. Ball will be in the way this time if he can plug it in, he does. About 30 metres out from Geelong's goal. Across to Byrne. Now, Byrne's got to kick it long as Stewart leads. He's outnumbered there, but oh, no, he doesn't get it on the second bite. Punched away. It's all Geelong again. There's a million of them here. Turner. Out to Princeton. Runs into centre-half forward. Banks it down. Bright again. Johnston punched away. Picked up by Bruns. This way, that away. Which way it would go? It's home. Six goals to four in the third term gave Collingwood a very handy 20-point break at the final change. But the Cats were expected to finish the stronger as this game built towards a thrilling climax. Covering a lot of ground, Murray Whitcomb. This one up towards the wing, kick number eight for Whitcomb. At the oh, oh. And a clever one-handed mark by Pickens. It's a Geelong free kick to be taken by Hawkins at right half-back. Hawkins now. In, oh, into the man on the mark. That was uh, Davis, but it comes back to Hawkins. Hawkins has plenty of time, gets the handball away to Boss. Boss in turn to Blake, uh, he's got a steady, blocked off the kick by uh, Kick. I'm too sure, over the top to Stewart. Stewart in turn across to uh, Low. Low dummies and weaves, oh, he wants support. There's none there, Young comes out. Boss again gets it across to Taylor, who's been the man of the match up the back line. Then Curvis, and away they go through Smith. Jan Smith up towards half-back, has a bounce. 
A long kick looking for Turner once again. Oh, Magro would have been for Turner. No free kick given. Here's a chance for Johnston. He's deep on the half forward line looking for Bright. He's out of position. And Ireland wins for the first time today. Collingwood by just a goal. Blake gets the knock, but straight to Dacos. Up to half forward. Kick comes from behind, but uh, hopelessly behind. Featherby gets the kick forward for the Cats. Johnston. Oh, what a leap. Couldn't take the mark, though. Taken away by Craig. He can kick his second in 30 seconds. Young's on the ball now. It's all Collingwood. Stewart paddles along to pick up a good bounce. Good smother. Oh, it goes straight past them all. They ball up, no play on the call. Tony Shaw, Dacos from 35 out. That's a goal. Collingwood, eight points in front. Eighth kick to Nan Curvis, making a return to the team. Oh, big leap by Hawkins. Davis breaks a tackle of Boss. Wright puts it to goal. Not oh. a bad kick. Great goal by Davis. Geelong fought back valiantly in the final term, and Neville Bruns had this snap with just seconds remaining to put the Cats in front and into the 1980 grand final. Johnston both there. Johnston stays at the back, runs into trouble. Clark at the back, handballs to Bruns. 50 metres out of snap is offline, brings up a behind. Collingwood by that margin in one of the all-time great preliminary finals. Four points the difference.